MS is a disease where the immune system goes astray, thinks that the brain and spinal cord shouldn't be there, and try and attack it. So once we understood that, the question is, well, how can you, what's going wrong in the immune system, and how can you modulate it? And one of the uh, central goals of our research and in our laboratories is a, a detailed study of the immune system and how we can uh, modulate it so it doesn't attack. We don't know the exact numbers, but we believe there's about a half a million people in the United States, maybe over two million people in the world. It may be becoming more prevalent and we may be understanding it better because we can measure it. The other thing I would say is that autoimmune diseases are becoming more prevalent in our society. So it's a major problem. There's two forms of MS. One is called the relapsing remitting form. That's when the disease starts, people have an attack and they recover. The immune system is off balance, it resets itself, and then there's another attack. And with each attack, there's more damage to the brain. And the treatments we have, and we have a lot of them, stop or decrease the number of attacks. So we can shut down the number of attacks. Now there's a second phase of the disease called progressive disease. So you have a number of attacks, but then afterwards your disease becomes slowly progressive. And we don't have a treatment for progressive MS. So that's one of the big challenges. Can we get a treatment for progressive MS? And if we treat strongly enough and stop the attacks, will the progressive MS stop? We're actively working on that, and I'm hopeful in the next five or ten years we'll have treatments that help people who have the progressive forms. One of the other major challenges in MS is understanding the heterogeneity or the different subtypes of MS, uh, because everybody's not the same. And in order to address that, uh, one of the things we've established at the Brigham is something called the CLIMB study. Uh, CLIMB stands for Comprehensive Longitudinal Investigation of Multiple Sclerosis at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. If I see a young man or woman who's 25 years old and has their first attack of multiple sclerosis, the question is, when they're 45 or 50, what are they like? Were they able to work, have children, raise their family, or are they disabled in a wheelchair? But that's a 25-year question, and the only way to answer that is to take a group of patients and follow them over many, many years and find out who becomes disabled, who doesn't become disabled, and why do some people become disabled. So we started the CLIMB study that began when we started the MS Center with 100 patients. We now have over 2,000 patients in our CLIMB study, and these people, they can get any treatments they, uh, that they want. Uh, they get their normal care, but they go into a special computerized database. They get a blood sample drawn every year. They get MRI as part of their care. And we have this enormous database of these 2,000 patients. So one of the major things we discovered in the CLIMB study relates to blood testing. And using fairly sophisticated uh, laboratory tests that we developed here at the Brigham and Women's Hospital, microRNAs, antigen arrays, we actually have patterns that can uh, distinguish different types of MS, relapsing MS, uh, progressive MS, responders to therapy, non-responders to therapy. So our dream is you come to the MS Center, we do an exam, we take a blood sample, we measure the immune system, we measure the MRI, we take all the information, and then we can tell you what your prognosis is, and we can choose the treatment that's right for you. I started asking my patients, uh, how do you define a cure? What is it to cure MS? And I came up with three answers. I came up with three answers. Number one is that somebody comes down with MS and you stop MS in its tracks. Nothing else happens. That's number one. And we actually are beginning to do that. So that's with our current medicines. Somebody has MS, they have an attack, let's say they have trouble with their vision or, or trouble with coordination, they recover from it, and we put them on a medication for the rest of their lives. 
They have no more attacks and they stay normal. So that's kind of a cure. A second cure is somebody who develops disability. Let's say they have an attack and uh, they have to use a cane or the nervous system is damaged. The cure there would be to rebuild the nervous system so that it functions normally. So we're working on that here at the Brigman Women's Hospital as well, basically through stem cells and through understanding the nervous system and how it can rebuild itself. So that would be cure number two. Now the third cure, which is the ultimate cure, is to prevent MS. Don't let it happen. It's like a vaccine for polio. And that cure, uh, I believe, is going to come from the gut and from developing a vaccine based on the immune system in the gut. So the gut is really the small and large intestine. So, you know, you eat something, it goes in your stomach, then it goes in the small intestine, then it goes in the large intestine. Now, how could you use the gut to develop a vaccine? In a way, it's pretty simple. What you would do is you would give a protein or an antibody or certain bacteria that would go into the gut and generate regulatory or good cells that would shut down the disease. Because in the gut, you have both good and bad cells. So that we believe that that is maybe a key to understanding and treating MS. I'm happy to say, or proud to say, that we're working on all three cures here at the Brigham Women's Hospital.